this, this afternoon I'm here with uh, Michael Aikham, um, Professor and Head of the Zoology Department here at Cambridge. Um, he's here to give a talk on genomes and the diversity of life. Um, so I'd like to begin with asking, for, for those who don't know, what, what is a, a genome? A genome is the complete set of genetic instructions within a given organism. And in us, in humans, it would be one very large molecule DNA in each chromosome, so, so 46 DNA molecules packaged into the nucleus of every cell. So there's a copy of your genome in every cell of the body. Okay. There's, there's a few extra little bits that are not in the nucleus that, 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 that are in some of the cellular compartments, uh, but basically almost all of it is in the nucleus and it's a set of DNA molecules. What it, what it means is that within those DNA molecules, there are both the instructions for making the major molecular components of the cell, the coded instructions, and also a set of instructions for saying how those uh, genes will be used during development, during the life of the animal. Okay, so there's a lot of important information encoded in those. So why is it important? Why are you interested or why is one interested in, in finding out the sequence of, the, of, of sequencing the genome? Different scientists are interested for very, very different reasons. Um, the driving force has clearly been to understand how human bodies work, uh, and hence the human genome was one of the first targets. And the better we can read that set of instructions and understand, if you like, what the parts list is for a human and how those individual parts work, the, the more power we have to uh, uh, modify, correct, uh, intervene when, when things go wrong. And, and, and although this is a very long-term objective, it's, it's the reason why so much money was spent initially. But, but genome sequencing has now become so cheap that we can envisage sequencing the genome of almost all the species that are of interest to us, all the species which, which people grow as crops, uh, which are important for conservation, uh, which are pests, uh, which, which are, are valuable or dangerous to humans in any way. And that, that allows us then to start thinking about a much wider range of applications. Okay. Um, and so specifically, what have you learned um, from sequencing the genomes of, of animals? Uh, asking what I've learned from sequencing, um, obviously sequencing is a collaborative endeavor, and there is a very rapidly growing database of sequence, so people will be using, in some cases, sequences that they've generated, but very often sequences that are present in, uh, in databases to compare. What I'll talk about in the lecture are insights that um, tell us a lot about the history of animals, on uh, where animals came from, what sort of changes in the genome uh, allowed animals to become large and complex, um, and some of the surprising aspects of the history of animals that we can infer from the pattern of sequence changes and rearrangements in the genome, which is effectively a record of the history that that uh, animal has uh, accumulated uh, over the millions of years of evolution. Okay, Michael Aikham, thank you very much.